Hello, I'm Dustin Carlino, and uh, this is a talk about a new tool called od net which helps you design um, strategic cycling plans to, uh, to improve cycling around your city. Um, yeah, so uh, hoping to not spend too much time um, just kind of introducing myself on the project. Uh, and then mainly for people who have laptops, um, you can follow along. Uh, there's a few different tutorials we can work through and um, some things you can use od net for, hopefully in the space of 30 minutes. Uh, and then at the end, kind of show you some other work that um, might be useful. Uh, but yeah, just to sort of introduce myself, um, since about 2018, I've had the pleasure of exclusively working on open source code, um, pretty much all related to OpenStreetMap and um, sort of sustainable transportation. Uh, generally, like what I what I try to do is sort of um, find ways that cities can uh, reduce reliance on cars, and also um, involve citizens in sort of transportation planning more directly. Uh, both through like improving communication between government and citizens, but also um, by making like transportation software very, very easy to use uh, for people without technical experience. Um, and in uh, the end of December, I or sorry, at the end of 2021, um, I moved from Seattle in the US to uh, London and joined the Alan Turing Institute. Um, and then in uh, a few months, I guess, or half a year ago, I uh, also joined Active Travel England, which is a, a government body in the UK um, that is very ambitiously trying to improve uh, walking and cycling in the UK. Um, and so uh, this is an experiment in how many things Google Docs would let me have on one slide. Um, this is uh, just an overview of some, some projects that I've worked on before. Uh, these all fall under the umbrella of, uh, of AB Street, um, which sort of started life as a uh, traffic simulation based on OSM data, where uh, you could sort of like edit the lanes on a road or edit traffic signal timing and then watch um, sort of individual agents move around the map. Uh, and try to improve things for, for whatever uh, thing that you cared about. And so then um, after that, the project kind of evolved into a few different, uh, much more tightly scoped tools for sort of exploring like 15 minute neighborhoods and what kind of things are uh, easily accessible by, by walking. Um, briefly tried this uh, arcade game called 15 Minute Santa. Um, and then uh, most recently sort of like making a tool to design um, low traffic neighborhoods or, or uh, like traffic circulation plans, if you've heard of those. Um, and in the past year, uh, while working for um, Active Travel England, I've become a web developer, uh, like it or not, and um, developed uh, a bunch of things on top of MapLibre um, to kind of uh, help local government and national government communicate about proposed cycle plans. Um, and some of the stuff that's come out of that, like the bottom left is uh, this MapLibre plugin called Root Snapper that lets you um, just like draw routes and sort of snap them to uh, OSM center lines, um, all running in the browser, no like remote API. Um, but yeah, uh, so the, the project that I'm talking about today, um, first I'd like to thank uh, Anna and Andy who are in here. Um, when we kind of go to the workshop part, if there are, uh, if people have trouble installing stuff for the, or questions and there's not enough of us, uh, they're gonna kind of help out. Um, and then some other colleagues at uh, the Alan Turing Institute have made the logo for od to net um, and Chris Conlon is a, a researcher that's working on edge costs um, with me and we'll talk about what those are in a bit. Um, and yeah, also od to net uh, couldn't exist without all of these other open source projects. Um, so yeah, thank, thanks to all of them for, uh, for existing. Um, yeah, so what does od to net do? Um, to motivate it, uh, I wanna, yeah, maybe it, it, it is worth sort of explaining that um, like the, the roads that are sort of safe to drive on, the roads that are safe to cycle on in, in many places are very much not the same. Um, so this is a, a section of South London and, and basically all of these roads um, ignore the stuff going through parks. You can't drive on those, but uh, otherwise all of the roads that are actually roads um, are, are safe to drive on. Uh, but if you're a cyclist, the picture looks a little bit different. Um, so these four colors try to show a uh, level of traffic stress or LTS, um, where the like the green roads are sort of very comfortable um, to cycle. You would let your, uh, your, you know, your kid do it without um, supervision. And the like darker orange red roads are um, kind of terrifying and even if you're a confident cyclist you you know something might go very wrong there um and so yeah uh like od to net heavily uses this idea of level tra level of traffic stress um some th there's sort of a lot of concepts like this it, it gets called a bunch of different things sometimes there's three categories or just um it's safe and suitable for cyclist or not uh the one we're using in this project has four categories um and uh there's a really awesome project from a few years ago out of um ottawa canada where the, com the osm community there made a mapping from OSM tags along a particular segment and assigned one of these four categories. 
Um, and ODTNet uses uh, exactly that definition today. Although um, one of the exercises is possibly improving it to kind of specialize it for different places because the, uh, yeah, the, the way they tag things in Canada is not necessarily relevant everywhere else. Um, yeah, so what do you use ODTNet for? So uh, imagine that you are a, um, a city government or a campaign group and you want to um, shift as many trips that are taken today by car uh, to drive, or that are um, driving today and, and uh, figure out why are they not cycling. Um, so first of all, like look for the, the trips that are very short that it you know should not be very it'd take a long time to, to like walk or cycle instead and then ask um, like what's what's the reason they're not. Um, and these are some common sort of reasons and uh, that people give. Some of these are maybe not so valid or not so valid anymore. Like um, e-bikes make steep hills very easy. Um, and if you need to carry a lot of things like cargo bikes have absolutely exploded last few years and, and made this very possible. Um, but the one we'll focus on today is uh, like and most often the case um, in many places that the roads are just absolutely not safe. Uh, and so OD to net kind of tells you which ones um, should we improve. And so uh, we can ask a hypothetical question and say, like, take all of those trips taken taken by car today um, that are kind of short and say, uh, pretend they did cycle and they took the most direct route possible, ignoring what, you know, whatever terrible roads there are, then look for the roads that most people would use. Um, and in many cases, this might just be like the, the motorways because these are sort of the direct routes between places. Um, and let's, let's count them and figure out which roads are the most important to improve. Uh, so this is what a, a route network does. And so um, just to kind of define this, this is like one particular route between two points, um, crosses a bunch of individual roads. Uh, here is a second route and the blue line is meant to show like, um, yeah, like these two routes kind of cross the same roads. And so if you uh, calculate routes for all of these driving trips um, as if they were cycling instead and look for the most popular roads, then you end up with the route network. Uh, and that's what this is kind of showing where the, the thicker lines are basically the ones that many trips cross and therefore um, are important to make sure are like safe to cycle on. Uh, so um, uh, these like route networks and, and sort of this overall technique for determining like what roads to improve are used by um, many, uh, many governments. And this is an example from Transport for London. Um, and they, they get called different things, particularly like strategic uh, cycling plans or network plans. Um, and there are some open source tools that calculate these things today. Um, there's some examples uh, sort of for England, Ireland, and Scotland um, that, that were worked on by uh, some research from the University of Leeds. And um, these have had enormous policy impact and kind of been used everywhere. Uh, but sort of computationally, it's, it's very difficult to, to take those methods and run them in a new place. Um, and also to actually run it for the whole country takes over a day um, and uh, uses an external um, routing service over, over a network. And so you, you end up racking up quite a large bill with them to, uh, to sort of do this analysis. And so that makes it hard to, hard to repeat. Um, so there's a whole bunch of open source uh, routing engines today based on OSM. Um, and uh, it's, so, so ODTNet doesn't use any of them yet. Um, it's possible that things could, um, things could change in the future, but uh, in short, the, the reasons are sort of performance um, and being able to run things directly in a, in a browser. But uh, we can kind of get into um, ideas for integrating the two later on. Uh, so yeah, now let me like actually just show you what ODTNet looks like, um, or at least what the output looks like. So uh, I have a mouse. Um, here is uh, yeah. So this is in um, Liverpool in England. So the first one uh, that I'm showing you is calculating um, the route from all of these blue dots, which are uh, just buildings around um, Liverpool. And uh, they're all going to one place. And this is sort of to, to really emphasize the pattern um, in the thing. And to show you that one place, there should be a purple dot that's uh, enlarging. Um, so everybody's trying to, to, uh, to cycle to this one hospital from all of the origins. And, uh, and so then the, like, the thickness of the line kind of indicates these are the important roads. And then the colors, if they're kind of showing up, are roughly how, uh, how dangerous are these roads. And so if everybody's taking the, the direct route, um, to get here, you'll see there's this like the east-west corridor is sort of sort of uh, very clear. Um, a number of uh, oh yeah, so there's like over sort of 400 trips taking it, um, but it's it's has that worst uh, LTS category where um, it, it's just sort of like it's a it's a uh, four-lane road with no cycle facilities whatsoever um, and a high speed limit. And so this is kind of a problem. If we were going to target improvements, 
uh, this is kind of the the clear winner for things that are important to do to sort of make sure as many people as possible could cycle to this uh, to this hospital. Um, but we can also calculate sort of a quiet network where we change the cost function and say, um, as much as possible, let's avoid main roads. And so just to highlight the destination again, um, yeah, that's where we're going. And you'll see that actually like a lot of people can uh, get to the hospital and basically only take um, green and blue blue routes. And so that's pretty good. Uh, the routes are a lot more indirect. You'll see like lots of um, curvy wiggly things. Uh, and if you happen to know Liverpool um, well, as uh, as some people that were kind of using the results of this pointed out, um, the North South Corridor uses this uh, like this trail that goes through a park. And actually this trail is not lit up at night and um, people that work at that hospital will very much avoid it. And so uh, this is a, th this leads to a point that like, um, to sort of specialize these results for a particular place, you kind of need local knowledge. And in this case, you need to know that um, actually this is, you know, you're not gonna get hit by a car there, but it, it doesn't feel safe uh, sort of for other reasons. And od net will let you tune the cost function and kind of um, fix that. But sort of ignoring those problems, uh, otherwise things look pretty good. You will notice that there's a bottleneck for everybody living um, kind of on this other bit of the peninsula where there's only one bridge to cross um, and it's LTS four. And in fact, I think cyclists are maybe even not allowed on it most of the time. And so that's kind of an obvious bottleneck that anybody living there kind of would have, would have been able to tell you. Um, right, so, uh, and yeah, and so there's two different versions of the network that I showed you are kind of have very different policy implications. Um, if you just want to say like, what if we wanted to encourage people to cycle today, is it even possible? Like, are there just a few sections of road that we want to kind of plug the gap and fix? The, the the quiet net, network would help you do that. Um, but if you're ambitious as a politician, um, then you could say, you know, if, if we want everybody to take the most direct route, then, uh, you know, effectively like look for the arterial roads and the, the motorways and, and make it nice to cycle on them. Um, and so, yeah, the goals of, uh, of OD to net are basically to take kind of this previous work that um, has had real policy impact, but make, uh, make it be a lot faster and easier to run. Um, be able to run it anywhere and uh, also let you like really tune the edge cost function for for cases like where um, you know that thing that looks very nice from OSM tags local knowledge says actually it's not so nice um, and just uh, citing a little bit of performance numbers the formatting is not great on these but um, kind of repeating one of the the earlier results in England from 2011 data uh, to calculate 13 million trips on um, on this lap or not this laptop but the other laptop uh, took about 25 minutes um, and the sort of end-to-end -end process, including like downloading the data through scripts and and all the all the all that took about ninety minutes. I um, mean, actually, the slowest step right now is using uh, Tippa Canoe to sort of format the results so you can load it in a, in a browser quickly. Um, and we're working on that. But the point is, um, if you own the the routing stack kind of end-to-end, -end, you can you can do pretty cool things. Um, and so the way that we'll uh, you you can use OD to net a few different ways. Um, the simplest is that it runs completely in your browser. You can sort of uh, import a small area from overpass um, dynamically and then um, play around with a few different, uh, like very, very simple things just to um, see how the tool works. And then later you can uh, actually like install it and either um, compile from, uh, from source in Rust or um, use a Docker container and kind of like write your own data science scripts to, uh, to extract origin destination data and other things you need and uh, get the results. And we'll, we'll kind of go through both of these in the workshop part. Um, but yeah, so these are kind of the uh, the inputs that you specify to OD to net. Um, the big one that might be a little bit confusing is the the OD data, which is uh, like origin destination. So um, effectively, you have to tell OD to net like what trips do people take, what are the the start and end points, um, and you can usually get this from some kind of census data depending on your country. Um, a lot of times, it's sort of expressed as like zone to zone, and so maybe your census collects something like a, you know. 500 people live in, in, some, in some area and 30% uh, of them are students. And so you can make assumptions about like who's going to school. Um, and sometimes you even have data about like where people, uh, like the zones where people work and you have like flows in between the two zones. And so um, you can feed a bunch of different patterns of data into OD to net and it'll kind of generate specific requests for them. Um, and to be clear, it's not doing anything like taking the centroid of a zone and just like calculating 50 routes between the same spot. Like that, that doesn't really make sense in this model. You always want um, like a specific point in space that usually like should represent uh, a building or like a park or someplace that actually people like begin or end a trip at. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the way it works, um, you feed in the, but you kind of specify some different input. Um, you, you run the tool and it kind of uh, 
parses the OSM data and, and builds this graph, uh, this graph data structure that can do routing. The actual routing happens by a technique call, called contraction hierarchies, um, which is uh, used by a lot of the open source routing engines out there. Um, I'll mention that the um, contraction hier hierarchy library that ODGNet uses is, uh, was written by one of the graph hopper developers in about two weeks. Um, they didn't know uh, Rust, but they like learned Rust and produced a like working an extremely fast library in the space of two weeks, and so that was that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, you you run ODTNet, you get this like you get the results uh, expressed as a GeoJSON file where um, every line string is just like one uh, one road that goes between two intersections, and so it'll like split up the OSM ways. Um, and then we use a, a standard tool called Tippecanoe to get PM tiles to uh, to render in the web app. Um, yeah, so now uh, if people have laptops out and actually want to try this, um, you can either go to, uh, you can find these slides at uh, slides.odtonet.org, um, and then all the documentation is at docs.odtonet.org. Um, and depending on uh, time and what people are interested in, there's sort of three, um, three things that we could do. Uh, so one is um, there's sort of an interactive mode where uh, if you don't want to do any coding or install anything, you can just do this from your browser. Um, and you can kind of get these interactive results, and so uh, I'll I'll show I'll show that option in a minute, and we'll kind of work through it. Um, if you are comfortable uh, installing stuff, or maybe you already have like Tippecanoe, Osmium, and and like Python going, um, then you could follow uh, the tutorial to sort of reproduce the uh, existing results for um, I think either like Edinburgh or York. Uh, I don't remember what the tutorial does, but there's like a few pre-written examples. Um, and then if you wanted to like actually run ODGNet for real in, in your area and you kind of know how to find census information or find some kind of origin destination data, uh, you can kind of like write simple Python scripts to prepare all of the input um, and we can work through examples of that. Um, and then also, I don't know, again, depending on what people want to do, uh, we can kind of dive into in detail, like how do these edge cost functions and LTS definitions work? Um, you know, how, how do we decide uh, based on a bunch of different factors what um, is a road sort of suitable for cycling and how suitable is it? Uh, we can kind of get into the details of that. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I'll go through the interactive thing just to get people started and then maybe we can take a vote about what we want to focus on, but this is up to y'all. Um, also, any questions so far? There is... Is it on? Okay. Uh, so one thing that is seems uh, missing this kind of analysis is that is assuming that uh, these critical connections can be done only by upgrading current infrastructure, and in many many cases much better things can be achieved by having uh, structural rules for uh, roads for uh, cycling that are distinct, completely distinct from road network. Uh, for example, something parallel to the um, uh, motorway is much better than having a, line, a, a, a cycleway uh, 20 meters from extremely busy road. Obviously, it is extremely resource intensive to find such cases to plug uh, plug these kind of gaps or uh, allow contra flow cycling and so on but it's kind i think uh, important to not miss this kind of solutions uh yeah thank you that's an extremely good point like i wouldn't want people to use this tool and then like only build substandard things as a result um so in the in the case of like parallel cycling roads next to motorways, the way that this tool could help is by having the motorway light up as a uh, as like a high demand corridor. And then like actually what people build is not, you know, literally just a, a cycle lane with a little bit of cement in between that and the motorway. But the point is like along the, the path that the motorway follows is a lot of demand. And so something should be done there. Um, what this tool, what this approach will not help you with is stuff like uh, if there's no existing um, road or path or bridge in, in uh in osm at all but like there there is a clear desire line to say like cross a river uh or cross a like a long uh rail line or something like it won't it won't really show you that it'll try to follow it'll try to find the nearest bridge and like have that light up as a as a big thing um and so i think it would actually be pretty helpful to 
maybe let you like draw in a new bridge or something and, and, and kind of verify like a lot of people would, would use this because this actually would become the shortest path between places that many people try to go, that kind of thing, yeah. One thing that I think would be much easier, uh, is it following one-way restrictions when trying to find route between points? Uh, so it will also detect cases when uh, contra flow can be added. Yeah, so it's actually uh, ignoring all of the, the one-way stuff right now. Um, because this is not meant to like tell you how like what routes could people follow today, except in one one of the modes. Like most of the time, it's meant to to tell you like there is some sort of pavement here. Like you could um, like if there's political will and, and a little bit of money, like something new could be done there. And and uh, and so yeah, for that reason, it's ignoring one way restrictions. And you could use this to get contra flow stuff. Um, one of the things I want to add later uh, later on actually is an ability to say like care about existing one ways because again, depending on like political and, and money resources maybe you want to like look maybe you want to like very carefully follow what exists today or maybe you're very ambitious and say like we, we can change anything including direction of streets um but yeah today it ignores direction completely um questions Um, I guess like so far, a lot of the stuff that you presented has been pretty visual, but um, do you plan on also having like kind of summary metrics to like talk about like if a city were to build bike infrastructure on one of these really high stress streets um, and that actually reduced a lot of people's detour uh, from that existing or from the ODs that you have? Um, do you have somewhere where you like summarize that uh, so that you can like just present them a simple number to communicate? Um, thanks. Yeah. Uh, really good question. Right now, not so much. Um, whenever you get the final results, like on the left, it does sort of break down, uh, like very roughly how many, um, like, uh, of all of the different trips crossed, like what's the, the total distance covered. And so you could do something like, uh, calculate the, the direct route and then like add in a network modification saying we built something new and then watch the, the total distances drop. Um, there's, I think a lot, a lot better things could be done in that direction. Um, and uh, like two of the things that I want to represent going forward are like letting you sort of make specific net, uh, modifications to the network, and then kind of like have a comparative result um, and more directly get those kind of analytics. Yeah. So nothing exists like that yet, but it's it's on the radar somewhere. Um, okay. Yeah. I, or, Yeah, just one last question. Uh, is there, in your um, knowledge, any data that supports um, the the modal shift, uh, knowing that you're going to improve your uh, your your bicycle network? So maybe by just comparing different cities and their um, uh, modal share of transport and using this tool, do, do you know of any data that can support um, the 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 knowledge of um, a certain level of uh, a road a cycle network and the modal share of bicycles in a city. Um, that's the million dollar question right now. Uh, so, one of my colleagues, Robin Lovelace at Active Travel England, is um, is doing something kind of similar to that right now. Uh, he's taking data about like 20 case studies of, of across England in the past 10 years of like particularly good new cycle infrastructure and looking at um, the mode split before and after and kind of seeing like uh, of the people that started cycling, like was it reasonably near the new stuff and like likely they were kind of using it. Um, I'm not aware of any like good data or good results here. Like if, if, if they existed, it would be very good because the case could be made to national government to get a lot of funding. Uh, so yeah, colleagues of mine are working on that, but I, I it, also, if you if you know of any of this kind of thing, like, yeah, this is the this is the hard thing. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'll I'll walk through some of the um, the interactive stuff, uh, but also like as people are working on this on your own, if you hit questions about things, um, we can we can jump around. Um, but uh, if you're in the web app at uh, odtonet.org, then um, you can change the mode. Like, there's there's sort of three modes, uh, and we can go to the second one, which is like to interactively generate networks. 
Um, and so here you can uh, either load an OSM PBF file if you already have like an extract of some area that you like. Um, I would stick to like roughly city size, like everything is running in your browser through WebAssembly. So like, you know, blow up your computer's memory at your own risk kind of thing. Uh, you can also um, import from overpass, uh, either by pressing the import cur current view button after zooming in sufficiently, or um, in the corner, you have this uh, like polygon tool to kind of draw an area. Um, and, and sort of for demo convenience, there's a few examples uh, kind of built in. So I'll load one in, um, let's, do, let's do Berlin. Actually, don't remember what this one looks like. Uh, but yeah, so like this is just loading a, um, a small extract of Berlin from a PBF file that I made earlier. Uh, so you get this little marker in the middle. You can um, drag this thing around. And whenever you let it go, uh, hopefully pretty quickly, it should um, re regenerate roots. If it suddenly all disappears, something's gone wrong, and just like move it again a little bit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, sure why that bug exists. It's possible that it's like not snapping to anywhere on the network or something like that. But, um, but by default, the result here is like not very clear. Uh, so you have some controls on the left. Um, one, of the, one of it is this like max for line width styling. A lot of this stuff, so this is extremely alpha. Uh, this, this, this will get better in the future, but if you like lower this from like 1,000 to 100, um, you get kind of better patterns. Uh, and um, so in this case, like what, this, uh, th what the interactive mode is doing is, is taking um, uh, all of these origins, which are um, actually just the intersections in the network. It's not even looking at buildings yet. And it's saying, what if all of these tried to go to the point that you have on the map? Um, just to kind of show, yeah. And you could sort of interpret this as going to or from, just like everybody goes to, uh, I don't know, like a, um, like a sports center, just from different places, either to or from, like what are the roads that they're likely to, to take as they kind of uniformly at random go somewhere. Um, you can kind of see the, the main things. Um, and so then what you can do with this tool is, uh, is change the cost function. And so, up here you have uh, distance, which means people are just like ignoring the current um, infrastructure that's there and just like taking the most direct route. So if we change this to um, the second one, the generalized cost function, uh, you'll see that kind of by default it it switches to to really like prefer safer roads, and and the as a result you have um, like very crazy like zigzag patterns of people as people like avoid a main road that would have been more more direct. Um, and what's kind of neat is that this thing lets you. Um, sort of express your uh, your root cost function in a, in a very detailed way. And so um, right now, so this is like a, a radar chart and it exposes um, like three different things that you, you might care about. Uh, so LTS is that level of traffic stress. So basically like, um, is the road safe or not? And then um, you have a second one, which is like the proximity to, to different amenities. And so um, the use case here is like, uh, there's often a, um, like a political thing that happens, uh, or a, a political statement that happens where it's like, let's say you're gonna re remove a lane of parking to, to make space for a cycle lane. Um, a lot of businesses nearby will say, oh no, I'm gonna lose all of my customers and go out of business. This is gonna be like a, a big problem. Um, and I think I don't have data on this offhand, but uh, like many places have experienced very much the opposite where if you make it nicer to like walk and cycle in a place, you increase footfall and like shops there see like a lot more, uh, a lot more business actually. Um, and so like, I guess if you're, uh, if you're a, if you're planning a transport network and trying to decide like what route should people cycle along, you could send them through sort of neighborhood back streets, like away from the main road and away and, and away from shops. Um, but if you particularly want to get this economic benefit, then it, it is probably worth kind of having um, some of your cycleway like pass close to shops uh, and sort of from the, yeah. And so basically this, this is part of the cost function. Um, if we're kind of like thinking about how uh, attractive or unattractive a particular road is to, to cycle along, like safety isn't the only thing. Also proximity to um, to points of interest are kind of another one. Um, and proximity to green spaces is another factor. Uh, although currently that control does absolutely nothing. So just don't don't use it. This is coming hopefully soon. Um, but what you can do here is, uh, is, is sort of like express your, um, the, 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 the cost function that you want by dragging around the corners of this, uh, of this radar chart. So let's say that we actually really want to, um, to route close to amenities and we really don't care about traffic safety at all. We just wanna like go next to shops. So we can take this and kind of drag it uh, here. And then you'll see that um, it's like 60, yeah, so now like amenities are like 60% of the cost function. Um, LTS is like 30% and then green space, we can just like make that go to zero or something. Um, and the, the route will change a little bit as a result. Um, and, and sort of, yeah, like as you fill around with this cost function, like you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see things on, on the map change. Um, and then you can also, uh, 
kind of modify the the different categories of um, traffic stress and like how much are they a problem? And um, maybe I'll, I, I can jump back to slides in a moment to kind of show uh, how this works. Um, uh, maybe I can find, yeah. Um, and just to show you the, uh, the third mode, because um, this is helpful if you're sort of like defining your new cost function. Um, if you go to explore edge cost and then again uh, load an example, we can go back to, go back to Berlin. Um, you can kind of color things. You can color the network by different uh, attributes to sort of understand this a little bit better. So um, if we change the uh, color this by nearby amenities, this is just showing you um, like based on the points of interest scrape from OSM and kind of snapping it to the nearest road, uh, most of the amenities happen to be up here and like only the roads that are kind of um, darker like have things snapped to it. Uh, some of this process might like th this. This is mostly here to debug. Like some of the the snapping and point of interest um, extraction might be a little bit wrong, uh, but yeah, like according to this, most of the the stuff is kind of up here and like you know it's a lot patchier uh, in this corner of the map. But if we change this back to um, visualizing by uh, edge cost, then um, like by default our edge cost function is distance, and so just every road is exactly the same. If we change it back to that generalized cost function. Um, then this is now kind of showing you like a heat map of, of how good is the street for, uh, for routing based on the preferences that we express. And so um, if we kind of take this and, and again, like prefer uh, routing close to shops, then we should expect to see things kind of in the top corner of the map be um, a lot more uh, low cost because being cl close to shops is, is sort of good in our definition. Um, so if we try that, um, and then make a uh, really de-emphasize level of traffic stress. Um, it is maybe working, yeah. Where uh, now the, yeah, like most of most of the roads kind of have a neutral cost and then particularly low cost, this like light green color is kind of happening in the corner where there's a lot of different shops and stuff. Um, but yeah, so these are some of the things that you can do with, uh, with the edge cost function. Um, I can kind of talk about how that works in a little, uh, in a little bit of detail, so. Um, if you uh, are not familiar with like routing, routing engines and stuff, um, effectively they, uh, if you ask it for a path from A to B, they try to like minimize the total cost of that of that path through the network. Um, and the like simplest way to think about cost is just um, straight line distance, like uh, you know just take the most direct route there and ignore everything else. Um, and uh, of course, if you're uh, if you're like a cyclist routing, there's like a bunch of different things that you you might care about. Um, and so like the, the first one on, on your mind is that like LTS uh, safety rating. Um, but then kind of, as I mentioned before, like even if you have a completely like separated from vehicle traffic path, maybe it's not lit up at night or it's like, a, it's a canal tow path. Um, and you know, if it's very narrow and you feel like you could actually fall in kind of thing. Um, and, and also sometimes you have uh, like a, a segregated cycle track that's like, you know, a, away from traffic, but it's, it's close enough to where it's still like extremely loud and unpleasant. Like, you know, that, that's not really nice. Um, uh, also, like hilliness and elevation very much matter. Um, currently, OD to net doesn't uh, import any of that, but that's that's on the that's also on the future work. Um, so th the goal is like all of these different factors will eventually be in that radar chart, and you can kind of express like you, you have to make a trade off and say like these are the ones that are important to me and these are the ones that are not. Um, and so uh, and the reason this is important is that like you as a um, as a city planner you might be targeting different people to kind of convince them to to start cycling. Um, and like maybe you uh, you have an e-bike subsidy because you're in a really hilly place, um, and you're kind of targeting people going to to work every day. And so like, what are the things that are important to them? Are probably um, both time and safety. And you know, there's a little bit of preference to just like happening to pa pass by um, someplace to get breakfast in the morning. Like, you know, this is different than somebody saying like I'm specifically going to go to one shop on my way to work. It's just like root me vaguely near a bunch of things that are open, so that if I you know get hungry. 50% of the way through the ride, like there's a lot of options nearby. Um, and so like that, that cost, that uh, edge cost function is very different than what um, somebody sort of training for, uh, to just like improve their athleticism would feel. Cause like then in that case, actually maybe somebody wants to to find hills to prefer them rather than avoid them. Um, and you know, they, they really want to avoid delays at traffic signals and lots of turns. They just want to go in a straight line uh, fast, that kind of thing. Um, and you know this edge cost function is also very different than uh, if you're sort of trying to get school children to cycle to to, uh, to school on their own. Um, you know, then like having the fastest path possible is probably not important. Probably like a very quiet, safe route 
uh, close to green space and stuff like that is, is maybe what you want from a policy perspective. And so um, the goal is that like you can sort of express all of that uh, by this edge cost function. Um, and so effectively the way, way that it works is that um, if we have the three different factors uh, like LTS uh, or the, the traffic stress, like closeness to amenities and green space, um, you have to pick a trade-off between them. And so you have to like make these add up to a hundred and just like, you know, you, you can't have all three, or if you want all three, then you can set them to 33%, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so you uh, you get the user to sort of define the, the trade-offs they want to make. And then for each of those factors, then you have to come up with a number between zero to one that represents like how good is this road for this category. Um, and this is, this is the really tricky part. Uh, and so like for the level of traffic stress, um, the kind of simple thing that we're doing right now is just uh, letting people input this kind of manually. And so um, the example on the right is uh, is equivalent to the like everything is exactly the same like you don't you know you're treating every road um equally you don't care you just want to get there fast and then the example on the left is um maybe like a more reasonable default where like the extremely safe roads these have like a zero cost um and then the uh you know you, you kind of increase the value by some amount for the the more stressful streets and exactly like how much you you drag these sliders around um like tuning this well is the hard part and i don't i don't have good answers here uh, I've just tried to make it easy to interactively fiddle with this and see the results. And so that's kind of the hope. Um, and then this gets even trickier for, uh, for things like defining a, a score for like how, how close is the road to, to different shops. Um, and the simple thing that we've started with is just saying, um, you know, the, uh, every, every road has like a certain number of shops that are kind of snapped to that road and are close to it. And so um, we'll, give a, uh, we'll give a good score if there's at least five shops near a road and a score of zero otherwise. You could also imagine like, just like linearly, inter linearly interpolating or um, even requiring like a mix of different shops and not just saying like any kind of point of interest or whatever. Um, but yeah, you, you could do something fancier if you wanted. Uh, and then similar for, um, for green space, this is not implemented yet, but I think we're gonna have different sliders to kind of express um, how close, like are you going through a park or are you just next to it or something like that? Um, uh, I guess tick model stuff is not too important. Um, about 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, so um, any questions so far or uh, like things that people would want to use this for and, and don't know the next step for anything like that? Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I will talk about a few. Um, oh yeah, I guess I'll uh, like move into the last section of the talk. Um, so if you're interested in using this, uh, I guess let's say as of today the um, OD to net is kind of in alpha, where uh, like the configuration format and a lot of the input will sort of keep changing soon. Um, and there's a lot of things that are not really implemented yet, but um, like will will be implemented uh, at some point. And if you're interested in in this project and want to contribute, um, particularly getting like elevate, getting a a good way of of like finding a data source for elevation and then um, being able to like match it to roads uh, would be a very useful thing. I think there's like a lot of software out there that does it already. A lot of it has dependencies that are particularly tricky to run in a browser. In a browser, and it's like the gold standard would be everything can sort of compile to WebAssembly, and like you don't need to attempt to install GDAL or anything like that. Um, but I think we'll have to to make some sacrifices around that. Um, and yeah, and then uh, to sort of use this in your particular area, uh, it's probably most helpful to find origin destination data from um, from some source, whether it's uh, you know maybe like the the public bike share program in the area kind of publishes like um, anonymized data about like trip trip starts and ends. You could like write a small script to kind of co convert that into the standard format and use that. Um, so th things like this, if you want to get it going in your area, there'll be like a little bit of d data science work um, in each place, but uh, it would be good to add more examples to the repo. Um, and uh, yeah, and so these are some of the many limitations um, in OD to net, uh, all of these things at some point will kind of be um, improved. Uh, so I realized one of the things I didn't show you was if you want to use this in your own area, um, like what are sort of the steps to do so? Uh, yeah, so um, if you kind of go through the, uh, the, the tutorials, they'll, they'll walk you through this sort of thing. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of show you what one of the uh, examples looks like. I think it's the... I'm gonna go to the tutorial because I forgot which one was the. Uh... Yeah, so this is an example um, in Scotland. 
Yeah, so the, uh, the ODTNet input, it needs a few different files. Um, and so these are just like simple Python scripts that uh, are examples of how to produce that input. Um, you could also write these in R or uh, in anything else you want to. Like the, the purpose is just to sort of produce the input. Um, but the, the basic steps that you need to follow are uh, to produce an OSM PBF file that like represents the area you care about. And so you could do this, for example, by like downloading from Geofabric um, and then just like clipping to a bounding box using uh, Osmium. Um, and then in the case of uh, like the hard part is usually com coming up with origin destination data. Um, in this case, the a really simple thing you can do is just um, use uh, like calculate building centroids for everything in OSM and say that these are all of the possible um, start positions. Uh, and of course, this has many many problems because like um, not uh, like not as many people like uh, you you could have like a uh, an apartment building with like a hundred people living in it versus like a single family detached house with like one person living in it. Um, and you would want to start more trips in the in the higher density housing. And so um, if you could, like you, you could write something fancier and sort of use uh, any tags in OSM about like the height of the building to kind of calculate um, the, you know, the relative weight of an origin. But um, in this example, it's just sort of treating everything uniformly. Uh, and then for this example um, in Edinburgh, there's a sort of another project that's already like defined these like census zones. Um, and so you just have to like end up producing a, a GeoJSON file with polygons um, that kind of have a name. And then you need, uh, then you make a CSV file that um, sort of says how many people go from zone one to zone two. Uh, and the CSV file sort of has a certain format. Um, and then that is, uh, that's basically it. Then the, um, the, you write a little JSON file to configure OD to net um, and kind of specify all of this stuff as input. And this is also where you would uh, use the cost function. And so you'll notice that like the cost is just distance here. Um, what you could do is use the interactive tool, kind of come up with this uh, this thing that looks right in a small area, and then there's a button to um, to produce the JSON. You can copy that in. Yes. I was uh, trying to do exactly this. And uh, question: There is this buildings uh, go JSON file. Uh, is it necessary to set up separate pipeline to generate it, or is it just uh, will generate from the previous step? Uh, yeah, so OD to net doesn't doesn't make it. You just have to um, to produce it yourself and then refer to it in the config JSON file. The examples um, should be using uh, OGR to OGR to to do centroids. Is okay to make these make zones make OD empty, or is it necessary to uh, produce something there to keep example working? What is the minimal uh, example? Um, yeah, good question. I guess. Uh, you could do much less with them. You, you could have a, a much more minimal example um, where uh, you could just specify like building centroids and then say, um, let's send everybody from a, bu a building centroid to the nearest school. And so you would like the minimal example might be like two GeoJSON files, one with um, points representing buildings and the other with points representing schools, which you could also do with a uh, like a simple query from somewhere. Um, and then there's a uh, there's a piece of config where you can say send everybody like start from every origin to the um, to the nearest destination sort of as the crow flies like that's an ex a simple pattern that um, isn't realistic but could sort of help. Uh, yeah, um, what I could do is in the next few days sort of add a, a more minimal example in a new area um, and kind of write that up as uh, I think that would be like helpful documentation. So yeah. Um, uh, about 10 minutes left. Any other questions? Or um, if not, I can sh show. It's not a question, but maybe an answer. There was a question earlier about a numerical score. Uh, there is uh, already a sort of tool that does that by SQL Network Analysis. It was developed in the States, but uh, they also try some European cities. Uh, the thing is that the numbers don't really sometimes reflect uh, what you what you feel as a bicycle user. They they sometimes give strange results, and I think one of the problems might uh, be well with the application of this level of traffic stress to 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 European tagging. Uh, my uh, maybe I have a question uh, because I just tried with a custom PBF uh, the tool and I've found out that it 
includes uh, as uh, LTS one a lot of pedestrian infrastructure, which were you actually not allowed to to use? Is it intentional? Is it by default possible in the UK or? Uh, yeah, good question. This is why you kind of need to write your own function. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what that uh, code looks like. So the the LTS definition is coming from the Bike Ottawa group, actually, um, and hasn't really been tuned for other places. Um, and so uh, if you wanted to, oh yeah, so um, if you go to slides.od.net.org, this is how you kind of quickly uh, get to um, like some of these links, or you can find them in the other place. But the uh, the logic for the um, Bike Ottawa's LTS thing, uh, I believe, yeah, it, it, in general, kind of like if it's a if it's a footpath and it does not say bicycle equals no, I think it'll allow it. Um, but this is very much like there's different rules in different countries, and like there's also different uh, like some sometimes some places will explicitly include bicycle equals yes no on footpaths. Uh, and so yeah, like this is kind of why you probably need to write your own um, uh, LTS function to kind of like properly reflect that area. Um, and if you do, I think it would be like extremely helpful to like submit it as a pull request. So there can be like a few different examples in there. Um, and you can write these things in uh, in whatever language you want. Um, there are examples in uh, in like in Python where uh, this is kind of like the minimal uh, this is sort of like the minimal example of how to um, define an LTS uh, a custom LTS thing based on OSM tags. So kind of as input, you get this um, like this big like JSON dictionary with all of the OSM tags. If you like copy the, the basic structure of this uh, of this file, you can kind of just modify the stuff here. Like effectively, you get um, uh, all of the just the key value pairs um, directly from OSM, and you just have to return a number between uh, one, two, three, four, or zero for not allowed. And so in this case, you could say something like, um, if it if it matches these cases of footpath, then just exclude cyclists from them entirely. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess um, since I have a few minutes left, I'll show a few other tools. Like if you're generally interested in, um, like the goal of using OD to net is kind of to come up with like, uh, you know, unless you already work in government to like, as a like campaigning group, sort of go to your government and say like, you know, we think there need to be roads in this particular, we need, we, we think there need to be improvements in this particular place. And we have like some amount of data and, and, and methodology to kind of back it up. Uh, so ODTNet kind of helps you with some of that, but um, there's a few other tools that I work on uh, with Active Travel England that could be helpful. Um, so this first one is called uh, the like ATIP scheme sketcher. Um, and you can think of it as like a, a very fancy GeoJSON editor that um, helps you do a few things. So uh, it's kind of like pre-built uh, in this area um, sort of in, in North England, and so you can uh, you can create routes that snap to the roads. Um, so maybe I'll make one from like Bradford City Center to uh, to down here, and sort of by default it follows all of these roads, um, the main road. But if I don't like some of that, uh, I can sort of zoom in and drag these points around to kind of get exactly the shape that I want. Um, and this is going to require uh, actually no, okay, it's hard to do it with a mic. Um, and, and maybe if you wanted to do something like draw a new bridge uh, over this motorway, like maybe you want a dedicated crossing, like we could have um, the cycle route go to the dead end street and then, uh, actually hang on. You can drag another point and then if you press S, it'll sort of like let you switch it to this freehand thing. And so you could like imagine a new special crossing over the motorway. And then on the other end, um, kind of drag the snapped point here and like make another point um, uh, that didn't quite work. Yeah, I messed that up. But um, the point is, yeah, you can uh, you can draw routes that are either snapped to the network, or you can have some sort of freehand segment in between. Uh, you can also do the same thing to describe areas. So uh, if you're sort of making a like a, a low traffic neighborhood or a big pedestrian zone, and you just want to quickly like make a polygon that covers space, uh, you can do this new polygon snap thing. Um, click three points. Um, sort of does the area, and in this case, I want it to like kind of uh, follow the main roads, and so I'll drag some more points until it sort of matches what I want. Um, yeah, and so this is kind of using the same uh, the same technique, and just like you can quickly draw area polygons that snap to something. Um, and so yeah, the, uh, effectively, right now this is just a like a, a fancy GeoJSON editor. 
um, and you, you export these things um, and it has a certain schema. And then um, like per, uh, per field, you can also kind of like fill out this basic information. We have different versions of this for sort of internal use where uh, people are starting to put a lot more information um, like, uh, you know, along a cycle way, they might specify what they're, what they're planning to do, the minimum width, like the number, uh, the expected cost, things like that. And so it's, um, yeah, just sort of a, a data entry tool that's convenient. Um, and then there's a uh, kind of a similar tool, or, or sort of the, like, once, you, once we collect a lot of information about um, schemes that people are planning, we have this just like uh, kind of general tool that shows a bunch of data in one place. Um, I don't have any of the internal data about where people are planning to build stuff in England, but you could load that if you did, if you did have it. Um, and then you can just show uh, a bunch of different layers. And most of these are from, or pretty much all of these are from OSM. So we could like highlight all of the rail stations around the UK. Um, we could show uh, existing infrastructure like bus routes kind of sh um, based on if there's a, a bus lane there or not. Um, we could, uh, we have a whole bunch of just like administrative boundaries which are um, necessary to know sort of for funding reasons. Uh, you can kind of like show all of those in one place. We also have, um, a lot of the census data from the UK, uh, UK census, um, where uh, there's like quite quite detailed like uh, output level stats on like population density or um, percentage of uh, households that have a car or not. And so like these are all sort of evidence layers that um, people in government need to use to to either uh, plan infrastructure or assess if it's you know should be funded or not. Um, and so this is just a a tool that kind of has a bunch of layers in one place. Um, and uh, yeah, and so this is all a um, Svelte map library application that's also open source. Um, and so if you wanna build anything uh, similar to this, then please get in touch and I can point you to code that may be helpful. Yeah, so I have a question from some online participants. Uh, so um, I have Tobias Jordans who is asking, how is the tool used right now? And how, uh, or how is it planned to be used? Um, so that's the question. Thanks. Um, so uh, right now, ODTNet does not have any um, active use because it's it's still quite in development, as uh, hopefully the presentation emphasized. Um, but yeah, so the first uh, use of it is is at Active Travel England. Um, we're looking at this like safe route to school project, where uh, effectively we want to encourage um, children everywhere to be able to like safely uh, cycle to school on their own, or to form like kind of bike bus programs and like as as big groups uh, get together and and um, cycle together. And so uh, we're some some other colleagues are working on doing very difficult data science things to kind of come up with the cost function uh, that matches the like behavior of what um, school kids should do on the on the uh, on their way. And once we do that, we're going to like look for gaps in the network where, um, yeah, like basically like the the ideal routes for uh, for this case are, are like not on main roads. They're going to cut their neighborhoods and use sort of existing quietway infrastructure. Um, but there are gaps in this, and so we're, we're trying to use ODTNet to discover those gaps and prioritize what we should uh, what we should fill. And so the origin destination data there is actually um, kind of interesting because uh, we sort of have um, uh, more detailed internal information about um, for every single school in the UK, like roughly the the postcode or like the, the general area where uh, where all the students live. And so we can plug in very um, detailed data there and kind of use it internally to decide which roads. Um, have gaps that we should we should fill. Yeah, so there's also a remark. Uh, so that they are also working on something uh, like a, a LTS version for Berlin. Um, so maybe there's interest in a collaboration, I don't know. Um, and there will also be a talk at the FOSGIS 20, 2024 conference. So maybe something for you to know. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I'll I'll definitely get in touch, um, and I'm going to try to actually visit Berlin at some point. And like, uh, yeah, but extremely ex exciting to hear this work is happening, and um, I want to collaborate absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think we're at the three o'clock mark. Um, so yeah, the, you can find uh, all the slides online. Um, yeah, please feel free to to start using this and send me email or file a GitHub issue if you have any problems. Uh, but thank you. Thank you.